your leaders. But I've been, you know, I haven't been able to interview you in person, and it's because you haven't, you've been in a battle, right? You guys, you've been in a battle. Talk about what's been going on with you as far as the level of how comfortable you feel like talking about what's been going on the last like year and a half of your life. Yeah, man, literally year and a half. Um, no, like everything, uh, you know, <laughs> everything was, if we go back to, you know, April, May, 2022, everything's normal, right? Like everything, everything pre July of 2022 is, is like my, my normal, you know, life, um, running active wrestling, you know, coaching T-ball and doing all that kind of stuff. And then, uh, June of last year started to get sick and it was like, it really can't pinpoint what's happening. Um, headaches, a lot of neck pain. Like it felt like my head weighed like 500 pounds on my shoulder uh, super, super stiff neck. And then the fatigue, the fatigue was like crazy. It's like, un, unlike anything you could imagine. I remember once I went out for lunch, I got Jimmy John's right. And I'm like sitting in my truck and I like to listen to the radio, eat my Jimmy John's, like, you know, just kind of like chill out. And I fell asleep, dude, I fell asleep, like eating my sub during lunch because I was so fatigued. Right. And it's not like I was staying up super late, getting up super early. Nothing had like changed, but my body was just so weak and fatigued. So I go to the chiropractor, try to get this neck things figured out because I'm thinking, well, maybe the neck is like associated with the headaches and, you know, something's something's out of alignment there, right? Like, you, you, you know, as a wrestler, eventually, you know, getting your head pounded on, getting your neck pounded on, getting your back cranked on and stuff like that. Stuff's going to go out of alignment. We talked about that with, you know, knees and everything else. So, okay, hey, it finally happened. And the crazy thing was, is like, I'm getting these adjustments and I'm not, I'm not getting any relief. And usually you go to the chiropractor and you like walk out of there after an adjustment, you feel like a million dollars, right? You feel refreshed. Um, I didn't have that. So whatever, start kind of getting these night sweats. And the night sweats are weird, but it's like June and, you know, I'm sleeping with a comforter. So I'm, I'm, I'm making like excuses in my head of like everything else that it could be, but I'm definitely, I don't have anything wrong with me. Right. Then it's 4th of July. We're on vacation. We're, uh, we're down in Florida. Like who goes to Florida in July, but you know, obviously we used to live there. So we're down in Florida quite a bit and, uh, you know, down in Florida, 4th of July, I wake up, my gums are swollen, my tonsils are swollen, my lymph nodes are swollen in my neck. You can like see them coming out. And uh, I'm so fatigued, like I can't even get out of bed. My wife's like, dude, you got to go to the hospital. You got to go to an ER. Like this is not normal. Like, yeah, you're right. Kind of get myself together, half acidly get to the hospital go to the ER. It's like high COVID time. So the first thing they're thinking is, oh, this must be COVID, you know, strep throat, maybe something, something crazy. So they give me all the virus swabs, influenza A, influenza B, you know, COVID, strep, wait about an hour, everything comes back negative. So they're like, dude, you got a viral infection, right? You got a viral infection. Uh, we're going to give you some steroid pills for the swelling. We're going to give you some, you know, like uh, oxycodone for the pain. And uh, more or less, like get a lot of rest, drink a lot of fluids. If you're not better, seven to 10 days when you get back to Cleveland, you know, check in with your primary care physician. And so that was my prescription um, update. I didn't get any better. So we got back Thursday, the 7th, Friday, the 8th. I'm still like dying, right? Saturday, the 9th, I'm coaching my daughter's T-ball game. About halfway through the game, it's like a three inning game. It's like one hour time limit, right? We're like halfway through, you know, middle of the second or whatever. And I just stay back in the dugout. My wife comes up. She's like, what are you doing? Like, you got to go out there. I'm like, I can't. Like, I'm just, I'm so like weak. I'm so tired. I cannot go out there and coach T-ball right now. And she's like, okay, I'm going to take you to Hillcrest, you know, the local, local ER over here. I'm like, ah. I want to fight her about it, but like, I'm so weak. I can't even fight her. I'm like, that's fine. And her parents were at the game. They were going to take the girls to lunch anyway. So it all worked out. She takes me to Hillcrest. Long story short, give them all the paperwork from Florida. 
explain everything. They do blood work instantly. Florida never did blood work at all, right? Sounds they like a Florida work. thing. Sounds like a Florida yeah. thing. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. yeah, Hillcrest does blood work. Within about an hour, I'm, I'm back there in one of the little ER rooms. Um, the doctor comes in. He's like, listen, man, this is really serious. And I'm thinking, I must have mono or something, right? Like, this is crazy. Uh, he says, you have leukemia. Oh, my God. Leukemia, like leukemia, leukemia, like what? You, like we have to do more tests. Like what do you, what do you mean? Because obviously it's not leukemia. So what is it? He's like, no, that that was the test. He said, I'm a, I'm a hundred percent certain. Uh, not only am I a hundred percent certain, I've consulted with our team at main campus, and we have to get you there right away. So, you know, looking back at the blood work and everything, my numbers. Uh, my hemoglobin's like in the toilet. I'm anemic. Uh, you know, I'm neutropenic because I don't have any like neutrophils in my white blood cell count. Uh, my platelet levels like at basically zero. So I'm at risk for hemorrhaging and everything else. Oh Long story short, I'm in an ambulance. I go to main campus. This is July 9th. Uh, a couple rounds of chemo and, you know, everything else. And I don't leave till August 28th. So wow. I was there for, I was there for about six, six and a half weeks. And then, uh, you know, they, they get me to remission. Fortunately, through all that, because I didn't really have any pre existing conditions and I was in pretty good shape, they identified early on that I'd be a, a candidate for bone marrow transplant because the type of leukemia I have, it's called uh, acute myeloid leukemia, AML. Um, if you're ranking your leukemias, like it's the one you definitely 100% do not want. Um, you know, the uh, survivorship rate's really, really low. Um, but they found me a 10 for 10 match. And so I had a bone marrow transplant scheduled for November 9th, exactly four months from my initial diagnosis, which is not a world record, but it's like record breaking speed to be able to go from diagnosis to remission to transplant within four months. Okay. So have the transplant. Um, if you've never been around a bone marrow transplant it starts with one week of like super chemo to basically kill everything in your bloodstream right we're going to wipe out all your reds all your whites all your platelets we're going to we're going to kill everything and then they transfuse you with new stem cells and t cells from your donor and my donor's anonymous i don't know who it is um 30 year old female from the united states that's all i know after a year the be the match program gives you the opportunity the donor and the recipient to exchange information. So I'm hopeful that this November, my donor will want to exchange information with me and I can have the opportunity to meet her. But at this stage, I don't know who it is, right? So one week of super chemo, I, I go in on November 2nd, I get discharged on November 28th. And uh, when you get discharged, man, like you're living in a bubble for the next couple of months because you have no immune system whatsoever, right? Um, I think the first time I saw you was probably in January. Like I kind of surprised everybody and I came to the CSU meet. Like they weren't expecting me there. I wasn't expecting to be there. And what had happened is Penfold called me. We were talking about the match and everything because that was uh, Boomer had set up the pin leukemia night, which was cool. Like I had no idea it was happening. Um, and I was talking to Penfold on the phone about it. And he's like, oh man, Forrest is here. I'm like Forrest is there. Like Forrest came all the way from Indiana with his wife and his baby just to come to this dual meet. Like I live five minutes from here. I'm going. So I actually wore like two masks. I sat like way in the corner of the stands I remember by you myself. Sat me. Yeah, I was like way up in the corner, man. I'm yeah. like, dude, like I, I can't be by anybody. Uh, you know, like dripped in hand sanitizer, a couple masks and everything else, but but uh, sat there and it, it felt so good, you know, to, to be back. And, um, you know, long story short, like continued that progression um, until April. And then April came and routine blood work. Again, something was a little bit off. Doctor wants to do another bone marrow biopsy. And we find out we have a relapse. Oh, man. So well, uh, hold on. Were you feeling it or was it basic? Protocol is once you've had a bone marrow transplant, you have blood work every two weeks. Were you feeling it or was it, we have to do this, this is protocol, this is how we treat you till we get you six years out or whatever. Is that what it is? No, man. 
like they say it takes a good year to two years just to feel normal after bone marrow transplant, like have your energy levels and stuff back up. I didn't feel anything, right? I didn't feel like, oh, you know, I'm starting to get more sick. Like, no, like, dude, you just had a bone marrow transplant 90 days ago or 100 days ago. Like, you feel like crap anyway. Like, you don't, you don't notice any difference. It was, um, you know, early on, I was literally getting blood work like multiple times a week. You know, I still had my, my, my line in my chest and everything, you know, so I was getting, yeah, yeah, well, what I had was called a Hickman line, but yeah, Yeah. effectively the same thing. It's a port essentially. Yeah. 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 I don't don't know if you can see it, but yeah. The scar. Yeah. 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 It's cool. I'm going to get a cool tattoo over it, but, um, anyway, yeah. Like, you know, I was very much transfusion dependent. I mean, from, from July 9th to June 30th, I had 88 blood transfusions. My God, dude, are you serious? Literally, literally 88 because we counted them. Now fast forward. And, uh, I, I know I just told this crazy story about getting leukemia and relapsing and so forth. It happens, and my doctor, who is like literally the best doctor in the entire world, her name is Dr. Hetty Carraway. She's the head of the leukemia department at the Cleveland Clinic. Um, brilliant, brilliant person. And, uh, you know, like literally saved my life a couple of times. But when we went through the relapse, it was kind of like, well, what are we going to do now? Right. And we talked about the standard of care treatments, which is traditional chemo again. And usually they don't want to really do that if you've been through transplant within a 12-month period because of the toxicity levels that are already within your body, right? It's, it's not good for your heart. It's not good for your liver. It's not good for your spleen. It's not good for your organs in general, right? So she had discussed these different clinical trials that were out there. And without getting too nerdy, my genetic mutation, which caused the leukemia in the first place, caused the acute leukemia because acute leukemias, right? I didn't know there was even a difference between chronic leukemia and acute leukemia. Acute leukemias, acute come out of nowhere. They literally come out of nowhere, right? When I started to feel those symptoms in June, that's when it happened. If I would have done blood work in May, it probably wouldn't have shown up, Wow! right? Nothing is wrong totally out of the blue, right? And my specific genetic mutation, which caused the leukemia, was dependent on this protein that that your body creates called menin. And so kind of the cool thing here is that she said there were some clinical trials from different pharmaceutical companies that were studying the efficacy of menin inhibitor drugs against these genetic mutations. And the theory is if we can cut the menin from your body, perhaps we can reverse the mutation and basically eradicate the leukemia. That's the theory, right? And we're not sure if it's going to work though. It's kind of worked pretty well in a Petri dish, kind of worked pretty well in animals, but we don't know if it's going to work in humans. And uh, she said, you know, like, is this something you're interested in? And for me, I was all in, right? Like absolutely 100%. Because How can you be all in on an experimental? How can you be all in on something that's experimental? We know it works on a petri dish. We know it works on animals. You're going to be our, you're going to effectively be a human guinea pig. How can you be all in on that? Because if I'm going to go in this fight and, you know, win, lose or draw, I at least want to you know, have something there that helps somebody else potentially, right? And the crazy thing through all this, and I I promise you this, man, from the bottom of my heart, the day I was diagnosed, I never asked why. I never asked why me. I never sat there and said like, you know, uh, I feel so sorry for myself. I feel so sorry for my family. My focus from day one, was always on what's next. What's the next test that we have to do? Whether it's a lumbar puncture, a CT, a whatever, MRI, doesn't matter. What's the next test? What's the next treatment? If it's putting in a, a line in your chest or if it's you know doing a blood transfusion or whatever, 
what's next? And that's that wrestling mindset, right? What's next? What's next? What's next? I never asked the why. When we had the opportunity to do the clinical trial, that became my why. That became my purpose. Now I understand why, in a sense, this happened to me, right? 30,000 people a year in the US and Europe are diagnosed with AML. It's got a 27% five-year survivorship. That means out of 30,000 people, 25,000 are going to be dead within five years. Now, not all of them are going to have a men-independent mutation, right? But let's say 25% do. Potentially, if I take this drug and we have good results with it, it could change the direction of treatment for five to 10,000 patients per year, right? So think about the long-lasting impact that you could have on tens of thousands of people beyond your lifetime. That's why I wanted to participate in the study, participate in the trial. So cats out of the bag, the trial has been wildly successful, right? My numbers, my uh, leukemia blast cell within my bone marrow back in May when I started trial was about 18%. After one cycle, which is 28 days in duration, we were down to 6%. After two cycles, we were down to zero. Not only were we down to zero, but my chimerism test, which measures how much of my DNA and my marrow is my donors versus my own, back in March, I was like at 40% donor, right? You want that to be as high of the donor as possible, right? That shows how strong your engraftment is. By July, my chimerism was at 99.7%. Oh, my God. Then when we did, and I get like these monthly bone marrow biopsies, which are super, you know, not fun. But when we did the bone marrow biopsy in August, they sent it for what's called next generation sequencing testing. And that testing shows any mutations that are present. The NUP98 fusion mutation that I had that caused all this wasn't even present wow. when we did the August bone marrow biopsy. So it's like, not only has the, the drug itself taken away the leukemia, it's reversed the mutation. Pretty amazing. Amazing. Right. And, and, uh, you know, like, again, we're still in phase one. People ask me all the time, well, what's the next step? I don't know. I really don't like, I'll be at the doctors on Thursday it's the the end of this cycle, the beginning of the next cycle. I do the bone marrow biopsy. I do all that kind of stuff, you know. Um, with all of it, you, you develop other things. Like I was in the hospital a month ago for like four days with pneumonia, right? Like I'm not, I'm not out of the clear. I'm not I'm not probably going to be out of the clear for you know 30, 40, 50 years. I mean, you know how it is, right? We we talked, you know, we've all known people who've had uh, disease, whether it's cancer or something else, and it's like. You're always kind of a little bit on eggshells because you don't know, like, oh my God, he got sick with COVID. What is it? You know, and it could be something totally different, right? So you're never really truly out of it. Um, but we're winning, man. We're winning the match right now. And it's a beautiful thing. And not only is it a beautiful thing, but like mentally, like I'm in, I'm in the best place I've probably ever been in my life because I have so much clarity now because I know my purpose, right? My girls, they're my legacy. When I'm gone, what they do and who they become and the people that they are and, and, and the impact that they have on the world, that's my legacy. This is my purpose. This is my why, you know? So because I have that, like mentally, dude, I'm more clear than I've ever been in my entire life. What do you think you want your your kids, your daughters, you know, um, what do you want them to remember about you, right? Like, so. You know, we obviously want to look at the positive, right? We want to look at the positive. But, you know, 15 years down the road, 20 years down the road, they're going to look back on this, whatever the result is. What do you want them to remember about dad during this fight? Whether, hopefully, you know, you're going to be here with us. That's the way I look at it, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's the way you look at it, too. We're both looking at it the way your whole team looks at it like that. Boomer looks like that. Jeff Breeze looks at it like that. Boom looks like all, all those guys you've dealt with. What's the biggest thing you want them to take away from this, you know, like this battle you've had? Uh just, you know, being selfless, man. It's not about me. It's about what can I do for the for the next group of people, 
you know, I mean, I think subconsciously anytime anybody is ever given, um, you know, if you hear those words, like you have cancer, you have this disease, I think like instantaneously day one, you make that decision, whether you, you vocalize it or it's just subconscious, I'm going to fight this or I'm not going to fight this, right? I'm going to fight this or this is going to be the end. And so I would hope that my legacy is that, um, you know, fight, right? It's, it's kind of generic, right? The Jim Velvano, you know, type, uh, keep fighting and everything else, but fight. And, uh, you know, like I said, now with my purpose here of being, trying to be selfless and, and help other people. And that's, that's what I want to be remembered for is that like, you know, we went out there, I try to keep life as normal as possible for the girls. Um, <laughs> you know, Audrina's eight, Aubrey's five. Audrina certainly is at a, a different position where she kind of understands more of what's happening. But my wife and myself, we've tried to keep life so normal for them, you know, so normal in everything, like going to school, participating in their sports, you know, trying to be there and pick them up from practices. And, you know, I mean, you see me out of these CYO cross country meets, I'm yelling like a freaking maniac, like, Oh, you know, like, you know, I, I, I honestly, like 10 years from now when they're 18 and 15, I hope they have like very slim memories of this, you know, of, of the whole leukemia battle, because it's like, you know, mom and dad kept life very, very much normal for us. And it, it didn't consume us. You know, we went to light the night last night down at Wade Oval Park, which was from the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. And that was a cool event. And I hope they remember it because there were some really good speakers there. And, and you know, they recognize like how fortunate we are to be in this position that we're together today because not all families are, right? Not everybody has the same success story that I've had to this point. And again, my journey's been a little bit of a roller coaster just to get here. Um, we, Andrina and I, we did the Velisano bike ride together, uh, you know, a couple of weeks back, you know? So like, I think that I'm committed to this thing, man. You know, this is, this is my purpose. It's not just, it's not just the research side of things. I'm committed to being part of the fourth angel program. I'm committed to fundraising and, and, and spreading awareness and so forth. And, you know, being there for you know, cancer patients and their families, man, you know, because I recognize that like, I'm blessed to be here, man. You know, I don't want to get too far into that divinity conversation. Um, you know, that's not what this podcast is for, but like, you know, like, uh, I'm, I'm blessed, man. What do you think your guys at Lake Erie College take from it? You know, you recruited a lot of these guys. A lot of them are there because of you, a lot of Michigan guys, right? You do a really good job with the Michigan guys, obviously Ohio guys. Um, but what do you think the guys take away from it? And what do you think their experiences? I know you can't speak for them. What do you what do you want them to get out of it? And what do you want them to be able to look back and say to you in five years when their journey's over, whenever they graduate and they're out in the real world and they're their their fathers themselves, their husbands, right? Like what do you want them to be able to take away from what you've given them? Yeah. I mean, listen, man, life life has a strange way of uh you know, sneaking up on you at times. And for me, like 2021, 2022, it was better than ever, right? Like in my professional life, I'm making more money than I've ever made. You know, teams go great. Everything, everything is, is phenomenal. Right. Um, and then all of a sudden this happens, right. And you, you gotta like roll with the punches. So I hope the takeaway for the guys is that, you know, life happens, enjoy the ride, right? Enjoy every freaking day that you have, celebrate every day that you have, because we're not promised tomorrow, you know, but enjoy every day that you have right now in the present and absolutely 100%, you know, let's, let's go forward with zest, be the best father be the best husband be the best member of your community that you ever possibly can be and you know let's just just know that i'm always there for you right like for my guys because they've been here for me like you know shout out to everybody because they were all there for me it's not like 
you know, this, you know, this guy or that guy, whatever, like, dude, I was getting texts every freaking night, everything Christian small, right? This dude committed to us like two weeks later, Jeff leaves a week later. I'm like in the hospital and I don't come out for like two months. And he still comes to school here with a coach he's never met. And every, I, I'm not even kidding you, every single night, every night from July 9th to August 28th, every single night, Christian called me. Every single night, that dude checked on me. So I'll never forget that, you know, and, and how so much that So do you think we're going to be able to fit, this is the mech Soviet single, the Navy Corps. Oh, yeah. Addison, Addison that was killed. Dude, in I, yes. What that yes. is, Barbarian Apparel, shout out. And that's my old singlet. I think we need to get rid of this one. And I think we need one of your singlets up here. That's that because I, I, that's just me. I'd, I'd like to have one. I mean, if we're going to have you on, we're going to talk to you. I come and I do your matches. I think that we, yeah. that's, that's what we need to do. I mean, that's just me talking out loud, though. Yeah, dude. Don't, don't put me on the wall next to Sylvia. And like, that's, you know, that ain't, uh, yeah, you put me, you put me down in the corner or something. Well, you know, well, put me well, on the well, desk. Well. Yeah, I don't, I put, wherever, man. But like, he's got to be up here. He's in the rafters. Yeah, hell you got to yeah, have man. that guy in the rafters, man. I got two of those, so yeah. I have both backdrops, so I don't have to move it all the time. Josh yeah. Sass is good enough to do that for me. But man, I just, I love your energy and your outlook, dude. It is just like refreshing to hear that you're not like. You know, a lot of people get caught in that trap of why me? And that's yep. very important. The why me thing is not anything I've ever even, a vibe I've ever gotten from you. And I love it. I think it's just like awesome. I'm just glad well, you your know, guys are learning something too. Yeah, man. And and like I said, like you have to ask them, but like I, I just hope they they recognize the importance of living life and enjoying life and uh enjoying each other's company enjoying the experience that they're they're on and uh you know no just listen man it's you're always either entering the storm you're in the storm or you're coming out of the storm like that's how life is right we're always at one of those three places i'm leaving the storm the next storm's on the horizon right when you accept that that's how life is you're either in the storm you know, entering the storm in the storm or leaving the storm. When you accept that, all of a sudden, like, it's so much easier to just like go through and, and roll with the punches, you know? But when you like have resistance to the storm, like all of a sudden that's when like, well, I don't know what to do. I'm panicking. Oh my God. And then why me? How could this happen? And everything else. And yeah, dude, leukemia is scary as shit, right? Like, I got some stories, man. I'll tell you, I'm not going to do it here, but like, it was bad, right? It was bad. Knowing what I know now, I probably shouldn't have even made it a week, right? Like, that's how close I was. That's how bad I was, you know? But here we are. Like, dude, I'm full of freaking energy. Love my guys. Love my family. Love my girls. And like, ready to attack the rest of 2023. My 40th birthday is in three weeks. Uh, my my one year you know, transplant anniversaries in like what five weeks? Like, dude, I'm blessed, man. I love it. You're riding the wave. Hey, let's go. The wave. You're weathering the storm. I like it. Hey, man. And and uh, you know, hopefully my guys step up and we can win a trophy and let's do it, you know. I love it. I love your your positive outlook to uh, you know, just like thinking about how you can help others. The 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 selflessness is just like it's awesome and refreshing to hear in a, in a society where a lot of people aren't very selfless. Yeah. Well, listen, man, that's, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know what those guys have told you, but like, you know, I, this, my life is about trying to just figure out how I can get back to the community. You know, it really is like, that's what I've, that's what I've just been about from the start. So what do you do for a living? We've talked about all this stuff, but no one knows what you do for a living. What do you do? I'm an assistant <laughs> coach. That's not what you do for a living. <laughs> no, no, that doesn't pay the bills. No, I, uh, I'm a certified financial planner. So I, I work in finance and, uh, you know, I, I own, uh, you know, several pieces of real estate as well. So, you know, I don't, I don't have the portfolio of Hivner, but, uh, you know, ah, 
Hibner yeah. and O'Carver Rocket. Is he? Yeah. He wrestled with my brother Ferd. They're 87 grads. Really? Learn something new every day, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah they really? were Norwalk. And then I think for his maybe junior and senior year, they came over to O'Carver. And O'Carver thought they could win. And I think they ended up like third or fourth. Yeah. And that was when you didn't have to have like a super team and you could win with like five guys. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, no, like, I, uh, yeah, no, I, you know, I'm, I'm like I said, man, dude, I'm, I'm so blessed, man, in my life. I really am, you know, and, and just to, to have the support of my family, of my wife, to be able to chase this dream and like, you know, help mentor these guys and, you know, be in this position and everything else. I mean, uh, you know, she's, she doesn't get nearly enough credit. So. Is there anything that, I missed that you want to talk about um, how many matches are we going to, am I going to be at this year? It looks like I'm going to start out with that quad with Gannon, Mercyhurst and Navy prep or uh, no, no, uh, Fairmont, 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 army prep. Yep. Yep. So uh, that, and then, uh, you know, we got Tiffin and Finley at home and then we have West lip as well. So like the I, home I slate about, is clean. Am I doing all of them? Am I doing all of them or not? I thought I thought four because I think there's one of them is like back to back. It m- might not be the West Lid because there might even be some there's some gym stuff going on with that, like double book in the gym. And, yeah. you know, so we may actually be looking for a different date or location for that. I don't know. You okay. know, I don't know. We'll figure it out. But right now it looks like three for sure, right? I think four for sure. Four yeah. Sure. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. I think that's what we what do we do i did three last year yeah yeah we we got a really cool i mean our schedule it's super tough i mean all those teams are obviously really good um but then when you look at like our away stuff you know midwest classic down at uindy that's like the premier d2 tournament we're going to national duels and um you know northern iowa like dude, northern iowa it's like the d1 you know, LEC with everything that they're dealing with right now. Yeah. You know, read, read between the lines on that. But like, yeah, I mean, like, you know, shout Where out do they to have it? It's got to be in the Unidome, right? They can't have it. It's at in the, the dome. Gym. Yeah, it's in the dome. It's in the can't dome. Can't have it at the West Gym. Right, right. Yeah, in the dome. And uh, so looking forward to that. And then obviously, you know, we go to Tiffin. We go to Tiffin for regional duels. We go to Tiffin for GMAX. And then Tiffin comes to Lake Erie for the duel. So, like I said, we're going to see those dudes like eight times, right? Wow. They're, at, they're at like the Finley Open. They're at Midwest. They're at all those things. You know, we got them at Storm regionals. Open. They're probably at Storm. Yeah, they, you know, they'll send a couple guys. We'll send a yeah. couple guys, you know. Like, because we're wrestling the quad the day before, yeah. Storm Open for us is going to be mostly like the, you know, backups and red shirts. Yeah. So. I love it. Yeah. Uh, okay do you think like you feel like uh did we get some things out there today you feel Dude, pretty good we did man we, we did, did. i love it um yeah i love it man well listen I, we have to get i gotta get the singlet I mean, it's, it's on its way man guys, who makes your guys' singlets uh well so we got the contractual obligation with bsn nike so all of our wow. actual gear um our extra stuff we we actually just uh our rtc stuff we went through vantage and those dudes really took care of us i mean okay. so you know that's a that's a northwest ohio you know and the, the the ones from last year like the pin leukemia ones those were constant pressure which they ended up folding up shop so they're not even around so anymore which i'll get a constant us. pressure one i can put a constant pressure one up then i don't have to fight with josh sasby from barbarian if it's somebody who's not competition with him that yeah. I think is good, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we're, yeah. We're, t- we're barbarian apparel. It's the barbarian hour, so we'll stick. That's right. With- That's right, man. Can't yeah. be giving no shout outs to no whatever else, but if Listen. someone pull it up shop, we'll 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 take their single and hang it up, and I don't have to hear about it. That's right. The company doesn't even exist anymore, man. There we go. And uh, defend what you built. Defend oh. so. By the oh. way, Chase, hey, shout oh. out. Yeah. Oh. Sh- sh- shout out. They were a sponsor for us for the uh, RTC outing. So you know much love to guy sacco and team like very appreciative hey, so you say it like joe rogan it's guy seiko seiko it's not so, sacco it's seiko guys guy seiko do you know how so, much i mean look i i even got some throwback 
I even got throwback, which I'm not supposed to be. I'm not supposed to be showing old brand. The blue. Right? Yeah. I like old brand though, but oh, oh, we got that guy. We got that guy. Oh, I got soap. Oh, oh, oh. He does not like this because this is their way of keeping a cosmetic company in Los Angeles open so they could make hand sanitizer. And it smells like tequila a little bit for me. <laughs> but I have it everywhere in my uh, all my vehicles and I've had to take a couple of uh porta potty hand baths, you know, because oh, yeah. oh, are yeah. gross. But uh yeah, shout out to those guys. Shout out to uh Barbarian Apparel. Um hey, thank you for the time. I'll start promoting, getting stuff out there, and I'll pop in and talk to you guys here in the weeks to come. Coach Bearden, thank you for the time. Stick around, all right? Thank you, brother. God bless.